What's up guys? My hair's a mess. Two years ago, I built this table completely out of scrap metal. The table has proven to be super valuable for my shop and it was a fun project. But in that process, I learned a couple of tips and tricks that I wanna share with you today. The first tip is minimize your welding. One of the main features of a welding table is that the top surface is flat. So you can set up your projects and know that everything is gonna be in line or on the same plane. Weld distortion is gonna be your main enemy in trying to keep your table flat. When you weld things with a hot molten glob of metal, that metal is going to shrink as it cools, which is gonna pull the metal around it in. Now, if you think through this strategically, you can plan for where you put the welds to minimize how much it's gonna affect your structure. Let me show you. To the whiteboard. Let's take the example where I have two large bevels on the same side of two plates that we're gonna weld together. Now, when you go to weld this, you're going to be putting that hot molten metal starting down here and working your way up. You might do multiple passes depending on the size of the plate and what you're doing, but what you're gonna notice is that there's much less material on this side than there is on this side. Now, if you think of expansion and contraction, if you put molten metal at the bottom here, and then you put this much of molten metal at the top, your top's going to want to contract much more than the bottom. So a joint that's, that's biased to one side for the weld material is going to have a tendency to want to fold up like this. Now, if you think through it and you make your weld symmetric, where you have the same amount of weld on the top as you have on the bottom, that is going to help reduce the weld distortion. Now, based off of the sequencing of how quickly you put heat into this side versus this side, you may still get some distortion one direction or the other, but it's gonna help minimize the weld distortion in that joint. This is why you see a lot of the tab and slot tables on the market. The welds that you do put into it are very small, less than one inch long welds that go to the center of the plate. So it's not concentrated on the top side or the bottom side of each of the plates. It's concentrated kind of in the middle, which allows for the least amount of weld distortion. They thought through their design. The tab and slot table kit tables are a good option if you have money. Another way around this is to just use bolted joints for your top plate. So you construct your entire frame underneath your welding table by welding. You drill holes and tap them into that structure in strategic locations. And then with a tapered bolt head, you bolt it down to the top of the table. And it's a good option. <clears throat> it's just a little more involved. Another way to help improve the flatness of your table amidst the welding is to add a lot of stiffeners that gets section depth, or it's called section modulus but it increases the stiffness of the table to bending across the top. So what you do, and you see this on a lot of commercial tables that you weld together. They have a grid pattern up underneath that maybe has four or six inches of a vertical plate that acts as a stiffener. And this is just gonna help stiffen it up. So when you do weld or put heat into your welding table, it is not gonna move or distort quite like it would have without that stiffener. Adding stiffeners definitely helps. If you enjoyed the video so far, go ahead and hit that like button. Tip number two, money spent now is gonna save you headache and time later. You get what you pay for. Let me get this straight. Do not let the cost of something keep you from doing it. I do not want you to not build because you're waiting to save up to buy the fanciest table or the, the best materials to make the fanciest table. No, 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 no. Go to the scrapyard today. Spend $30. You can find decent stuff at the scrapyard and get a table built for $30. Use angle iron as the legs and a thin plate on the top. It's not gonna be flat, but it will allow you to get out there and start welding and having fun. However, if your budget allows, 
I highly suggest spending the money on the right materials. A half inch thick table is going to be less affected by weld distortion than an eighth inch table. So it would be much better to buy the thicker plate. However, it's like 10 times more expensive for half inch plate than it is for an eighth inch plate. Additional material to add stiffeners underneath your top plate is money well spent. Buying a bunch of rusty old metal is cheap. Yeah, scrap takes forever to clean. All right, tip number three. Start your table with a minimalist mindset. Try not to add too many features and cool options and cool attachments on your table when you're first starting out. If you're a seasoned veteran, you can disregard this rule. But if you're newer to welding, just like me, refrain from putting a bunch of attachment pieces on your welding table and spend a little time getting to know your welding table. Understand how you move where you wanna be. Then, as time allows and you find yourself really wanting certain attachments or features on your table, you want a bench vise here or you want a stool here or you want some storage for an angle grinder or some angle grinder attachments here, then as the need arises, put it on. But don't do it until then. Start with a minimalist mindset. If you think these tips are gonna be helpful to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications. Ding, 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 ding. Rule number four is use square tubing or rectangular tubing when you can. Avoid round pipe or round tube because this makes fit up a lot harder. The only benefit to round is it's generally cheaper. You could find some two and seven eighths oil filled pipe for extremely cheap on Facebook Marketplace. However, you'll pay the price in the time it takes to prepare the pieces to weld. When you try to use round pipe for a frame and weld the, the ends of the pipe together, you have to cope or fish mouth the ends to get everything to fit correctly. It takes a lot of time to shape the ends of those pipes. When you buy square or rectangular tubing, all you have to do is cut it to length and then weld it together. There's flat surfaces everywhere that you have to put the weld joints down. So easy. Go buy square or rectangular tubing or go to the scrapyard and find square or rectangular tubing to try to save money. Do not buy round. Rule number five, have fun. The point of all of this is so that you enjoy the project and enjoy what you're doing. The whole purpose of this channel is to inspire you to get out there and go build something. Get out there and start building right now. Call your local scrapyard, see if you can get on to their site and start looking for cheap metal to build your table. Buy square if your budget allows. But get out there, have some fun, and get to making and welding projects together. I hope this was helpful. Comment below if you guys are planning on building a table or would like to build a table, and let me know if you have any questions. I currently don't have any sponsors, but I'm looking. So if you're interested in sponsoring this channel, go ahead and send an email with a proposal to this email address, and we'll see if we can't start working together. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and go build something. It's a ton of fun.